Hi everyone. So back when I was first working out the specs for our solar and battery install, I was trying to work out what the optimum amount of battery storage would be for, for us to make the optimal amount of savings given the cost that it would uh, take to uh, install that system. And I came to the conclusion that um, a Give Energy 9.5 kilowatt hour plus a 5.2 kilowatt hour battery would be the optimal for us. Now, um, there are various reasons for maybe getting a little bit more battery storage. So what I wanted to do in this video was talk about the reasons why you might want to consider getting more than, uh, more than that and uh, whether or not it would be worth it ultimately in the end. So um, I've written a, a list of uh, re possible reasons why we might want to consider getting extra battery capacity. And the primary one would be because it would save us a little bit extra on our heating because um, we got slightly more battery capacity than we need for a typical summer's day, but it gives us a bit of extra capacity to help support the heating um, over the winter um, because we've now got our, our, our air-to-air heat pump system, which obviously uh, does run off of the uh, the battery during during the winter up until the point where the battery runs out, and then we would need to draw a bit from the, from the grid at peak rate. Now, adding extra battery capacity would mean that we would need uh, less peak a grid to help run the heating which means obviously lower cost because we'd effectively be running the heating during uh, using uh, off-peak power so that's one good reason for potentially wanting more battery capacity another reason would be obviously if we had extra capacity we'd have a little bit more backup in the case of a power cut um, so you know that would be useful um, in the rare occasions that we get a power cut but maybe not particularly critical for us we've we've had one or two power cuts where we've needed the battery but it's not been a particular need, so maybe that one's not so important, but even so, it would be nice to have if, uh, if we did get some extra capacity. Um, but if we also had more battery capacity, it would also mean we could uh, force export more of the battery during the summer um, period. So if we're on, um, say, Octopus Flux or Intelligent Flux, we'd have a little bit more battery capacity to force discharge back to the grid at the peak rate and that could earn us a little bit of extra money um, during during the summer so that that might be uh, something to, to consider um, but also if we added more battery capacity then that meant that the um, the existing batteries would be under slightly less strain so um, my thinking is that we would add our uh, any extra battery capacity to our existing five kilowatt hybrid inverter um, in in a sequence so what effectively you, you chain them together and they all go into the same inverter um, and of course if you if you do that then the individual batteries connected to that inverter would be under a little bit less strain um, on any given day and that has consequences in terms of how much you can actually discharge of course so I'll cover that in a little bit more detail later um, but you know that could be something to consider and that might then um, uh, help your batteries last a little bit longer you know a few more years perhaps because um, maybe they wouldn't be discharging all the way um, every day so that might help uh, all of the batteries last maybe a couple of years longer um, and of course uh, related to that um, adding a little bit extra capacity now means that we would mitigate against our existing batteries losing capacity over say a 10-year period so let's say they lose 20 to 30 percent of their nominal uh, usable capacity over 10 years well if we add a little bit more capacity then that would effectively mitigate against against that um, so you know those are I would consider probably the main reasons for for getting extra battery capacity but uh, do any of those actually make any sense in terms of um, is it worth the cost of getting extra capacity. So what I want to do now is show you some calculations that I've done uh, to cover um, some of those uh, those things that I mentioned to see whether or not ultimately it stacks up and are we able to achieve sufficient savings in order to cover the cost of extra battery. So let's break out the spreadsheet. So in order to calculate how much we could potentially save uh, in terms of our energy bills by adding extra battery capacity, I've been monitoring how much peak grid we've been using during the winter months uh, and the result of that is shown in this chart here. So what we've got is uh, each day um, along the date line there and all of these red bars is how much peak grid we've been using in kilowatt hours, how much we've been imported from the grid during the peak hours. So we had Octopus Go during um, the winter. Um, so basically anything that was 
uh, pulled from the grid during the, the peak period, so that's anything other than the off-peak period from uh, half past midnight until half past four. Uh, that I considered uh, peak import. And you can see the result of that um, is uh, in the middle of the winter during um, November, December, January to a certain extent, we've got some days where we've imported quite a bit actually from the grid. Um, you can see that on the worst day it was well over 25 kilowatt hours. So pretty much nothing in October. It only really started picking up in November, a few kilowatt hours here and there. It really started to ramp up um, towards the end of November, beginning of December. You can see this, uh, there was a real cold snap at that point there. Dropped down a bit um, during the latter half of, of December and into January. Then we had another cold snap uh, towards the uh, middle of, of January. And then it's more or less dropped off completely to zero. Now there's a couple of reasons why from sort of middle to late January onwards, we had essentially no uh, peak uh, grid import. Firstly, it did start to get a little bit milder. That's um, absolutely uh, the case, and that would definitely help. Um, but uh, another important factor is that we started to change the way we heated our house. Um, I've got a video about that, which you can uh, check um, um, if you click the link above my head right now. Uh, and that, uh, I've tried to work out whether it would be worth us boosting our heating during the cheap overnight period and um, so the you know the off-peak period uh, for for octopus go from half midnight to half four if we just ran our heat pumps a little bit uh, during that period just to sort of take the chill off the house and, and sort of pre-warm it ready for the day would that mean we would need less uh, peak uh, power to uh, to run the heat pumps you know for the rest of the day and that certainly seemed to be the case so from the middle of january onwards we essentially didn't need any peak import at all so i'm thinking if we ran that strategy for the whole of the winter we might actually be able to pull down quite a lot of these uh, these taller bars here in fact but um let's say that this was a typical winter and um this is what we would expect to be drawing from the grid at peak times if we added extra battery capacity some of this stuff um, could be covered, some of these red bars could be covered by off-peak power instead. So what I've done is I've made a calculation and uh, there's a lot of nonsense going on over here uh, where I've got, um, I've set up some tariff um, values here for the winter and the summer, I'll come to the summer one in a second. Um, but what I've done is I've, uh, I've tried to calculate how much we would save by adding extra, extra battery capacity. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll this back over and I'm gonna start changing this value up here. So this value is um, extra battery capacity in kilowatt hours. So if I start adding some uh, some extra battery, I'm going to add 4.2 kilowatt hours. So 4.2 uh, kilowatt hours is the usable, roughly the usable capacity of adding an additional 5.2 kilowatt hour give energy battery. So the 5.2 kilowatt hour give energy battery has a usable capacity of about 80%, which equates to roughly 4.2 kilowatt hours. A little bit less, but let's say 4.2 kilowatt hours. Now if if uh, we were able to charge that battery up fully during the off-peak period, that means that all of these red bars um, below 4.2 kilowatt hours could be covered by that extra battery capacity. So those are now colored in blue, and that's what I've called uh, saved kilowatt hours there. That means that um, all of this blue stuff is uh, heating that we could use off-peak power instead of peak power. And obviously that would save us some money because uh, at peak, so let, let's say I'm assuming the um, the intelligent go tariff here. That means that I could uh, run that those those blue bars there would be covered by 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour instead of 26.37 pence per kilowatt hour, which would be the red bars there. So that um, is uh, obviously useful, and um, we could increase this a little bit more if we wanted. Let's say we added a, a 9.5 kilowatt hour battery. Clearly, we would be saving a little, a little bit more because more of that uh, peak power is now uh, been moved to off-peak power. But let's, for the sake of argument, leave it at 4.2 kilowatt hours. Um, and what the result of that is that over the winter, all of this blue stuff, if we add up how much that would save us, that comes to 46 pounds and 34 pence for that um, saved winter peak import power. However, there is an additional saving you could make, which is during all of the other days where we're not uh, needing the heating so much, we could actually force export that battery capacity instead at the uh, at the um, the standard export tariff, which um, for Intelligent Go is 15 pence per kilowatt hour. So if we've 
fully charged the battery at 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour, then if we didn't need that by the end of the day, we could force export it all back to the grid at 15 pence per kilowatt hour, which is a, an arbitrage of 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour um, of, uh, of that export, which means that we could earn an additional £39.23 just uh, through force exporting that. So that's all that yellow, all of the yellow bars here. So we're assuming that we can, we can actually force export that full 4.2 kilowatt hours of capacity every single day when we don't need it to support the heating. So that's that yellow stuff. So in addition to that, I'm assuming that we would then switch from Intelligent Go over the winter to let's say either Flux or Intelligent Flux during the summer. And then we can do exactly the same thing. We can force export that entire extra 4.2 kilowatt hours of capacity back to the grid, having charged it up at the off-peak rate. So for the sake of argument, um, Octopus Flux has an off-peak rate of, um, for me anyway, 14.3 pence per kilowatt hour and a peak export rate of 24.05 pence per kilowatt hour, which means I could fully charge the battery, if I could fully charge the battery, that's another thing I'll come on to, uh, 4.2 kilowatt hours at 14.3 pence, and then force export all of that during the peak export period, which is from four until seven in the evening, at 24 pence per kilowatt hour, I would have an arbitrage of nearly 10 pence a kilowatt hour for all of those. And let's assume that I can do that for a full six months. So let's say from the 1st of April all the way through to uh, the end of September, uh, so that's 183 days. I think I've done that right. Uh, 183 days, um, 4.2 kilowatt hours per day at uh, an arbitrage of about 10 pence. That then gives us a saving of, or an earnings over the summer of 74 pounds and 94 pence. So if I add all of that, all of those up, that gives me a grand total of 160 pounds and 51 pence uh, for the year. And over, let's say, a reasonable lifetime of a battery should be 10 years plus, but let's assume 10 years as a, as a sort of reasonable um, estimate, we could save £1,600 over 10 years. So that's with the 4.2 kilowatt hour battery. Let's, for sake of argument, just because we can, let's say, can we, what can we um, earn or save, assuming a 9.5 kilowatt hour battery instead? We could potentially save £3,500. So let's see what the actual battery uh, costs are currently as of today, which is uh, the 17th of April, 2024, uh, and uh, see if that's anywhere remotely similar to, uh, to any, of these, um, any of these values that I've uh, calculated here. So to get a sort of basic benchmark, I've gone to midsummerwholesale.co.uk and I found their Give Energy page, and they've got their um, Give Energy batteries here. So let's say the 5.2 kilowatt hour um, battery is the one we're after. That would give us the usable capacity of uh, 4.2 kilowatt hours. The cost of that is currently um, the best part of £1,800. So you can get extra battery capacity nowadays VAT free because of the new um, changes in the VAT rules. Um, so how does that compare? £1,800 compared to our um, estimated saving of, what, let's see here, £1,600. So that means that we're it's really on the cusp. So this is assuming we could make full use of the battery, we could save ourselves £1,600, but it would cost us, well, a minimum of £1,800 to, um, to get that battery, and then obviously we'd have to get it installed, so it would be slightly more than £1,800 probably. So on the face of it, getting an extra 5.2 kilowatt hours is probably not really worth it. It's really right on the, on the, on the cusp. But how about the 9.5 kilowatt hour battery? Well, that is currently uh, 3,500 pounds. And how does that compare to um, my calculation from before? Uh, well, 3,500 pounds. In fact, they are almost exactly the same. Uh, so it could be argued, okay, well, maybe you should get a 9.5 kilowatt hour battery, add that to your system, and uh, you'd just about break even after 10 years. However, is it really worth doing that? Um, I'm not so sure. So uh, my uh, thinking is that um, realistically, you're not going to be able to fully make use of your battery in the way that I've described here. To do this uh, um, force exporting over the winter each day, you'd have to basically get to the end of the day and decide whether or not uh, you were able then to 
um, force discharge what you've got left in, in, in your battery. And then you would obviously run that force discharge to, uh, to get that extra uh, earnings from the, the 7.5 kilowatt, 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour uh, arbitrage. Realistically, am I going to be doing that? I'd probably need some sort of automation to do that. And I don't really want to do that, honestly, if I'm honest. You could probably do it manually. Um, that would be a bit of a pain. So realistically, I'm not sure how much of this force exporting I'd really want to be doing over the winter. Um, I'm not sure it's uh, it's something that I could fit into my lifestyle. Let's put it that way. So um, is that gonna is that gonna help me much? I don't think it is really. Over the summer, um, I can absolutely um, set up the uh, the schedule uh, that I currently run just to force export for the full three hours from four until seven. And um, so I'm pretty confident that I could get that additional um, uh, 170 pounds per, per summer. Although realistically, um, I'm not looking at the 9.5. I'm probably gonna get, the, I would probably get a 5.2 kilowatt hour instead. So let's say 75 quid per summer. I could probably get that. Maybe that's doable. However, we're already at the point where we've got sufficient capacity that force exporting for three hours doesn't even drain the, the 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 capacity that we've already got the uh, the fourteen odd kilowatt hours that we've already got. So adding an additional four point two kilowatt hours, realistically, we couldn't actually force discharge all of that during that three hour um, peak flux period. So um, yeah, I'm not sure I'd be able to make use of that either. So you could argue, well, okay, just get another inverter and 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 sort of have this on a separate inverter that you could then completely force discharge independently of your existing system. Yeah, that's that's all fine and well, but then you're talking, okay, not only do you have to buy the battery, but you also then have to buy um, an additional um, inverter. So let's say we coupled that additional battery to uh, a three kilowatt um, AC um, inverter, that would be another 930 pounds here. And therefore you'd have to add that onto the cost, which makes um, the savings um, just not not worth it at all. Um, so, however you look at it, it's either very marginally worth getting or not worth getting at all. Um, so, for the time being, I'm thinking I'm not going to worry about getting an additional battery for now. I think actually my initial calculation was pretty spot on of the you know the combination of the 9.5 and the 5.2. That seems to be the sweet spot for us. And adding any additional battery is not really worth it. Um, given the current price of batteries. However, battery prices are changing all the time. And if they come down significantly over the next few years, maybe it might be worth it in the future. So I'm definitely gonna be keeping my eye on, on the price of batteries. And of course, if there was a sort of secondhand market for, for give energy batteries, uh, you know, uh, if I could pick up a, an extra 5.2 kilowatt hour battery for let's say a thousand pounds, that actually might be worth it. Um, that might just be um, at the point where I could justify getting, but certainly with prices where they are, I'm saying that it's not really worth uh, worth getting that extra battery capacity. So there you have it. In conclusion, I don't think I'm gonna be getting extra battery capacity anytime soon. There is another alternative, which is actually adding a little bit extra generation, but I'm gonna cover that in a completely separate video. So keep your eyes open for that one. But for now, I hope you found that useful and uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.